Hey everybody, welcome back to part three, sampling audio and reason. Today we're gonna do rhythmic samples. We're gonna record some beatbox in Kong. Kong is an amazing drum machine. Kong, remember, is like a combination of an MPC, uh, Native Instruments battery, and an old 808. It utilizes many forms of synthesis to get the sounds, including having the ability to record audio or to sample directly to a pad. I love this. I love Kong in general. Um, anybody that's used Kong is pretty much a fan of it. Um, but, you know, we're going to go take the next step, which is sampling directly to it. And we're building upon what part two was in sampling, where we made a melodic instrument with uh, a bass uh, that we recorded into the NNXT. So between part two and part three of this, you're going to get the idea how to directly sample into, uh, say, redrum, directly sample into Kong, uh, doing sound effects, drums, that kind of thing, and then also have the ability to sample melodic devices directly into N19 or N and XT, or either the drum machines as well. Um, maybe it's just not as clever uh, to do that, but you know, who knows what people will, will use this knowledge for. Um, so the first part of this is we're going to show Kong. Uh, I'm going to go ahead just to make sure that it's clean, and I'm going to initialize the patch. So we can see that uh, the sampler that I had earlier disappears, and there's literally nothing in Kong right now. So it's a blank slate for us to build on. And before we get into it, uh, just like we did in part two, uh, we're going to go ahead and just check the routing real quickly. So part one kind of showed the routing, showed how sampling works. Uh, we want to make sure we get that. So I'm going to hit the tab key, I'm going to flip the rack, and we're going to look behind it. And we'll see that we have the sampling input area. So one of the things that makes Reason so amazing uh, for a sampling piece of software is that it has dedicated sampling inputs. And those inputs are fed from your audio interface. So all we have to do to make sure that we have routing is just quickly to sum this up, is to make sure that in our interface, if we're plugged into port one in the interface, that we're pulling a cable from port one into the sampling input. Remember, the sampling input section never goes away. You have left, right, stereo if you want to use both. And since we're sampling uh, from a microphone, we just need one input. So that's going to be into input one. And one of the great things about doing this in Reason is this automatically feeds all the samplers. So all I have to basically do is start sampling Sampling, and as long as I'm cabled into the left or the right or both, and I know that I'm into the right port on my interface, it's going to directly feed that. Now, we also want to make sure that we have a good level. So we have to be engineers. We have to think a couple thoughts, uh, once again, about things like sample rate and bit depth. Um, in reason, bit depth is dictated by the interface. And we're using a duet, which is 24-bit only, which is what we want. I would never record anything in this day and age at 16-bit if you have the choice. And then we also also have sample rate. Sample rate, in my humble opinion, should be as high as you can manage it. Your interface dictates the ability of sample rate, anywhere from 44.1 uh, to 192K. Uh, I'm a big fan of sampling at 88.2. So I'm going to go into my preferences, and I'm on the audio tab, and here's the duet. You can see it. And I'm going to pull my sample rate down to 88.2. Now, I'm in a, a sampling session. I'm not in a previously existing session. So I can do this with no fear of ramifications from other files. But the truth truth is even, Reason's a little bit agnostic about sample rate. It'll mix and match different sample rates. Other programs do not do that. So Reason gives you a lot more flexibility. That said, I'm still sampling 24-bit because the duet dictates that it's 24-bit only. And at 88.2, um, because I like 88.2, I, I find that uh, 88.2, if I'm going to take a sample and I'm going to pitch shift it and do different things with it, uh, there's just more information in that sample for me to do that. So we've set all that up. We do want to work on getting Getting a level though. That's the other thing. And we can look up at our, our monitor input and our sampling input section, uh, and we're going to be able to check our levels. Uh, the big meter in Reason, which is accessed right here. So I just click that. Let's see it go away. See it come back. Um, I could direct to an input or an output. So if I click sampling input right here, it's going to give me a level for whatever comes through. And whatever is going to come through is our friend Harmonic, who is in the vocal booth today. Harmonic is a good friend and a very talented producer who happens to be a student of ours. We're very proud of a lot of our students. We have some very, very talented students. Um, 
JP or Harmonic is going to perform some beatbox duties for us this afternoon. And we want to get a level first. So we're going to go ahead and just have a little mic test and we're going to see what we have. Now, one of the things to remember in Reason and most DAWs, you will not be controlling the level of input through the DAW. It's going to be on your preamp. So you need to go to your preamp and all your preamps could be very different from a duet. Um, but however you control the input, you're going to do it on the preamp. And then also you can think, you know, how far is he from the microphone? What kind of room is he in? Uh, uh, how much is he projecting? And this is any kind of an, uh, an instrument as well. It doesn't have to just be beatbox. So if I'm sampling guitar, I'm sampling flute, how hard are they playing? Uh, all these variables matter. And bigger picture, even when you're sampling the musician, the instrument, the microphone, the preamp, all the things in that food chain really matter. So don't think I have a terrible little mic and I've got a really bad little converter and I'm playing, you know, a really beat up old instrument and I'm going to get this pristine sample. It's not how it works. Now, I'm not saying not to do that because beat up old stuff can give its own unique sound. I've sampled things like a speak and spell and, you know, any kind of like old Radio Shack stuff, anything that makes cool, fun sound is fair game to sample, but I'm saying if you're going for a clean, pristine, natural sample, think about the components that are in that audio chain. So all that said, let's go ahead and just make sure that our levels are cool. So if uh, you want to go ahead and give us a little bit of your kick. One more. Pretty good. It's a little, little loud, so come back a little bit on it. Give me one more test. Back a little bit more. It's a little loud, so just tone it down just a little bit. Much better. Um, now, the metering really matters in this as well. So I want to get an accurate meter, so I'm going to go with the uh, PPM view off of this with peak as well, so I'll get a very accurate reading. So now one more. That was all the way to the top, but it did not distort. So we're going to have to be careful about this. In particular, when we're recording someone doing a beatbox, they're blowing air into the microphone. So just be aware. And he's definitely not pointed right at the mic as well. Um, but this is a little more sensitive. If I'm recording pan flute, uh, per se, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to control my levels. Um, but all that said, just that's why you test. That's why we rehearse. That's why we set levels. And this is no different than recording audio to a track, right? We are engineering this. All right. So now we're going to go to Kong. And the way that we sample is so simple. They've done this so well in Reason. All I have to do is click a pad, any pad. And you can see that as I click different pads, that I'm going to engage that particular uh, library for that pad. And when we sample, it's going to auto create a nano sampler to record or hold that sample. And you'll see that happen uh, as we hit record. And technically, all we have to do to do this is click the sample button. All right, so we've done this before in part two. Remember, if you click and hold, it'll sample until you let go of the mouse. If you click it once, it'll sample up to the 30 seconds of sample time that you're given in reason. So I'm going to go ahead and click it once, let it open up, and I'm going to go directly into edit mode from the sample. We're going to normalize, we're going to crop, we're going to fade out, and we're going to label the sample. Does all sound good? Very Harmonics good. ready. Love that. He's got the passion for this. So we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. I'm going to turn off my Talk Mac mic so we don't get any bleed. And I'm just going to go back to old fashioned pointing at the talent in the booth. And he can't hear me, but you guys can hear me. So make sure I've targeted the right pad and it's going to be right here. I think that was a good sample. So we're going to play it. Right, so sounds good, no distortion. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna crop it. Right, I want the dead air at the beginning. All right, so you saw I cropped it. I'm gonna normalize it. I'm gonna try to normalize it. There is an undo. Normalizing takes the level of the audio up, the peak of the level of the audio up to zero dB. A lot of times that's really good on a low level sample. Sometimes you bring up the noise floor with it. So season to taste with this one. Kind of like that. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a fade out so we don't have just like fall off a cliff uh, sharp ending on that. I want it to fade and we're going to label it kick and we are going to save it. So that is in this pad now and you see how that auto created the nano sampler. Now 
depending on how well acquainted you are with sampling, you know that there's some other variables that we can address here. So I've got amp envelope, I've got pitch controls, I've got velocity, lots of things. And then Kong in general, I have tons of effects um, kind of for another day on that one. This is literally just getting the sound into Kong. Um, and I can also trigger this on the keyboard, which I'm not targeted. So let's go make sure that we're on Kong. All right, so there's me playing that back off the keyboard. So love it, it's a good sample. So now we're going to bring harmonic back into the loop with talkback so he understands what I'm saying. We're gonna to go to the second pad. So everything blanks out here. We're gonna come back up and uh, what sound are we going for? We're going for a snare. So in the second pad, we're gonna get a snare. You ready? Yes. You wanna give me a test real quick? <laughs> love it, great level. So talk back off. We go into edit mode and I'm going to crop it. I'm going to normalize it. I think I'm going to undo that normalize. He gave me enough of a level without that. So I'm going to go ahead and say maybe that uh, we'll crop the other way. I'm just going to take this part of it and then I'm going to hit crop and uh, still do a little fade at the end. We're going to call it snare. Now I've got a kick and a snare. I'm going to bring harmonic back in the loop. Now, mind you, these are raw samples. They've been processed. The kick was normalized, um, but that's it, right? So they've been processed with that only. Um, think about all the other things that we can do to these, right? So there's no EQ. There's no compression. Um, that's just a raw sample in there. We love everything about it. So what's uh, next on the agenda? Next is a uh, closed I hat. All right, so we're going to go to the third pad and uh, make sure it's drum three with this one. And I can save all these samples in a bunch of different ways, um, but I'm basically just letting them accumulate into the Kong sample window. So let's look at this real quickly. The tool window under the audio tab here, assign samples Kong one. So this instance of Kong actually encapsulates all the samples that go to it. Uh, and I close this triangle because it disappears, open it up. These are the samples that are associated. I'm labeling the samples in the editor. So we've got the kick and the snare. Um, I can actually open the editor. See when I select one, I can hit edit. I can play it, right? And play the kick from in here. So this is the window where we actually get to audio within a reason. Reason a little different than other DAWs and how it handles audio. So tool window or F8, uh, F8, the, the, the function key that brings it up is really important when you're dealing samples. And if I want to export these into another program, this is the only way I can do it. So I select it and I export it. So that's where my samples are living. You're going to see this list build. And are you ready? Yes, I am. Did you give me a test first? A little bit more. Okay, so everybody sees also every sample we're engineering, even though we're doing the video, we wanna make sure that we're not just getting too low, too high of a level. You have to put a little bit of thought and, and definitely uh, attention to detail with this. So we're good? We are. So take him out of the loop and we're gonna roll. All right, so we go to edit. We're gonna crop this, play it back. And I think maybe I could probably crop a little bit more of that. Do that now. Let's do it in this way. That's a little better. Sounds pretty good. We'll do a little bit of a fade out. Now I'm going to try to normalize it. We'll see what we get. It's too much. So I'm going to undo that again. So like I said, you got to season to taste with normalize. The kick drum loved it. Everything else, it's it's a little bit too over the top with that. So I am going to uh, label that. That was closed hat? That was closed. And now we have the third sound. All right, pretty cool. So we're building our kit. Um, you, got, you got another one in you? Yes, I have a, an open hi-hat. Let's hear it. Very nice. Uh, you ready? Yes, I am. Sweet. All right, so we'll go in, back up where we're gonna crop this one from, just a little bit. And we'll do a little, maybe we'll crop it down to that. And we'll just do a little fade out, play it. 
I'm liking that. So we'll call this one O oh, hat for open. All right, so now I've got four sounds. We'll bring JP back into the loop. Well done. All right, so now we have just kind of the basic fundamentals for building a drum kit with this. Um, we could go on and on. He's got lots of sounds in him, believe me. Um, and really, you know, we want to just show the methodology of this and hope that you're going to have some fun with this and build your own kits. Um, now, this was, remember, this is not melodic. This is the easy sampling, right? All we have to do is target a pad, hit the sample button. If it was a redrum, it's the same thing. It's so simple to do this. You're not worrying about mapping and root note. It's put to a pad. So I basically, it's plug and play. I sample into it and I can play it back. Now, if we wanted to, say, boost some of the levels, we think some of these are a little light with it. You can see as I click through, you can see the sampler reflecting the names of all the different samples. Um, so we could come in here, amp envelope, turn up the level a little bit, and then we could go ahead and maybe populate some of the effects on this. I think a compressor would be pretty nice with this because it's got some makeup gain. All right, so we hear them start to come back in. So we'll, uh, and it's per pad, you get the effects per pad in this. So we'll go ahead, we'll put a compressor on the snare. Give it a little bit of makeup gain. All right, so it starts to come together. We'll get the last one in there just in case. So we'll go ahead and put a compressor on that, put a little bit of makeup gain, a little compression. And uh, let's not forget our friend the kick here. Put a compressor on that, turn the amount up, a little bit of makeup. Right, so that right there in a nutshell is how you sample into Kong. Um, we've done both parts now. So we have a melodic into NNXT, and then we have the beatbox, sound effects, noises, however you want to look at that, into a drum machine. They're very different. Sampling into NNXT with a melodic instrument, it has a lot more details to it. So if you think, yeah, I'm not quite sure about that even after watching the video. Start with Kong or Redrum. It's fun, it's easy, but think bit depth and sample rate. Think what are my levels, you know, what's what input in my interface, and then just make sure that it's reflected from the input here. So that's that's directly pointing towards the input on your interface. Make sure you're in sampling input. That's the sampling traffic hop at that point. It's gonna route audio to whichever sampler uh, that you're choosing to hit the sample button the sample button. Kong in particular, remember, is based on pads. So click a pad, it's going to put that sample there. Other than that, you're, I think you're probably ready to go and should have some fun with it. One last thing about sampling. Unique organic samples stand apart from just using presets. So please have some fun. Do this sample. Some of the best stuff ever has lots of very interesting samples in the music. Um, things when you hear the stories about the sessions, you would think, wow, that was that sound. Who would have thought? So just don't load presets all the time. So I want to one last time thank Harmonic who was kind enough to get in front of that microphone and give me some very, very usable sounds, which we'll be saving and using in a project later, uh, and still pretty raw. So once we have a little bit of time, I'm sure we'll go in there and throw some verbs and some EQ and some other things on him, but uh, you saw how quick it was to get to that point. So um, think about watching this as many times as you need to. Go back to part two for the melodic stuff and get a lot out of this and have fun.